God's so real. Yeah. Yeah. He's so real to you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I will not be before you real long this morning. Uh, God has uh, placed this word on my heart, and I'm just so thankful that God always gives us a word in due season. Amen. 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 And, and, and the word of God this morning is going to be coming from the book of Samuel. And I always like the book of Samuel. This is the book of 1 Samuel. And it's always a great book because this is the book that really talks about David and Goliath. And it's always nice to kind of hear that story sometimes where you got to just deal with some giants in your life. Amen. And then, so God um, laid it on my heart to really kind of talk about this, but talk about it in a different way that we've talked about it in times past. So let me just read 1 Samuel verses 17, I mean, chapter 17, verses 38 through 40. And it says, and this is an NLT version, Then Saul gave David his own armor, uh -huh. a bronze helmet, and a coat of mail. David put it on, strapped the sword over it, and took a step or two to see what it was like. For he had never worn such things before. I can't go in these, he protested to Saul. I'm not used to them. So David took them off again. He picked up five smooth stones from a stream and put them into his shepherd's bag. Then armed only with his shepherd's staff and a sling, he started across the valley to fight the Philistine. All right. So again, David basically said, Saul, I can't wear your arm. Mm -hmm. I'm not familiar with that. So what I'm going to do is pick up my own stuff and then I'm going to take that and then I'm going to go off and fight the lion. Uh -huh. So the title of today's message today is Be Who God Called You To Be. All right. Be Who God Called You you to be. Amen. So let us pray. Lord, I thank you for another awesome opportunity to share your word. Father, you said in your word that your word is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our pathway. So Dad, we are dependent on you to give us a word today that will pierce our hearts, souls, and minds so that we may be able to carry out the very plan and purpose you have for our lives. We believe it we receive it, and in Jesus' name, we all say, amen. amen, amen, amen. So again, you know you guys have heard this story over and over again about how David uh, was small in stature, Come on now. very small in stature, and then David was selected, or actually David stepped up and said, I'll be the one to fight Goliath, right? Uh -huh. And Goliath being this big giant, I think they said that his helmet weighed 125 pounds. I think David was 125 pounds. So David went to go fight this giant uh -huh. of a man. All right. And as a result of David going to fight this giant of a man, David took it upon himself to rely solely on what God had given him. Yes, All right. Which was his sling and his staff and this is all he had is, you know, these five stones. And David knew that based on his faith in God, that God was going to do it just with what he had. Uh -huh. Amen? Amen? So I wanted to really kind of talk about this because one of the things that I think about is if you dig a little deeper into the story, all right. it teaches us a lesson on how to truly serve God and how to exemplify, and folks from Sunday school would remember this, how to exemplify a childlike faith. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. A childlike faith, which is one that solely relies totally on God. All right. Amen. Amen. And so what God wants us to do is when we're facing the giants in our lives, yeah. we gotta have what God calls a childlike faith. Yeah. On, one that's solely reliant upon him. That's right. Right. And so when I think about some of the Goliaths uh -huh. in our lives, when you think about some of the giants in your lives, uh -huh. it might not be this big, burly man that has a 125-pound helmet on his head, uh -huh. but some of the giants in our lives come in the form of things that we go through. Uh -huh. Sicknesses like cancer and diabetes uh -huh. 
diabetes and high blood pressure and things that we just don't feel that God can kind of solve for us in a way in which we want it to be solved. Things like um, foreclosures, when we're going through things with our finances, our homes, and things of that nature, where we just can't seem to see that there's an end in sight. Unemployment, underemployment. I don't have the type of job that I would desire to have because I lost my job in the past and now I have to take a lower level job and make less income and I can't see any light at the end of the tunnel when it comes to paying my bills. Those things become giants in our lives. Not only is it about jobs, it's about family and friends. Think about those giants in our lives when our family members tell us that we'll never be anything. That, well, you know what I'm saying? So the things that, you know, you didn't finish school, you didn't finish the things that, you know, your family would have desired you to finish, right? And so therefore they start to look down on you and don't expect that you would be able to do anything or be anything in life. The friends that look at you, right? Those that look at you and discuss and think that you're not where they're at, you're not at their status, right? Or those that look at you and say that you think that you're better than them because you're in a different space than they're in, right? Those become giants in our lives, and I will tell you that it also stifles God's growth in our lives as well. Ultimately, the giants in our lives represent the problems and the challenges that we face while serving God and how we approach those giants reveal our true character. All right, now. Mm. It reveals our true character. Yeah. So today I would like to talk specifically about one particular giant that stifles us from being who God called us to be. And that is this giant called one size fits all. all, right. all right. One size fits all. Uh -huh. So what do I mean when I say one size fits all? This is the notion or the belief that there is only one way to do something, uh -huh. on, one way to worship, uh -huh. one way to pray, mm -hmm. one way to preach, uh -huh. one way to sing, mm -hmm. one way to dance, right. one way to dress, one way to lose weight. Lord knows, you know, we look at somebody else's weight loss and we think there's only that way that I can lose, right? Uh -huh. One way to praise God, right? Right. one way to work. And here's the deal, the body of Christ becomes persuaded and bound by what's working for someone else. And then we begin to believe that the success, that your success, that our success is contingent upon doing the things the same way that somebody else does it. Think about what I just said. We align our successes and failures based on what somebody else looks like, uh -huh. what somebody else thinks about it, uh -huh. what somebody else says about it, right. what somebody else's life looks like as they continue on in the things of God. Mm -hmm. Well, today I stop by to tell you that whatever God has anointed you oh, to yeah. do, right. you got to know that you've been equipped to do it. Yeah. Right. So whatever God has anointed you to do, All you've right. been equipped to do it. God has given you the appropriate armor to do it with. You don't have to put on someone else's armor. Just as David did when he tried to put on Saul's armor. And he realized he couldn't do anything with what God gave Saul. He could only leverage the God-given gifts and talents God anointed him with. And if God anoints it, then only God can appoint it. Come on now. So understand what I'm saying, say, so if God wants this particular thing, if God has given you everything that you need, right. he's equipped you with the, with the tools and the resources to get it done, yeah. then nobody else can qualify the call that God has on your life. All right. Only God can qualify yeah. that call. Uh -huh. Right, so that's why, you know, when people say what God has for me, right. it is for me. Right. So what God has for Jackie Bryant is for Jackie Bryant. You understand what I'm saying? What God has for Michonne is only for Michonne. That's why favor isn't favor. Right? So when people start talking about the favor God has on your life, right? And then people start getting upset about the favor God has placed on your life, please don't get upset about the favor that God has placed on Miss Alice's life. Because you don't know what God's call is for her life. Nor do you know the story that she had, right? So all we see is the glory that she presents, right? But we don't know 
everybody else has. You see what I'm saying? So I, let me tell you, this is a story for me. Being in ministry, and Pastor, I know that we've talked about this before, being in ministry and being a woman in ministry, being up on this pulpit with some folks that are very dynamic, like God has given them some gifts and talents to you. Like, when you look at things like that, you think that you have to come prepared the same way that they come prepared. You have to bring the word the same way that they bring the word. Because here's the deal. What you do is you look at people's responses. Right? And so when you see the hype, you get caught up in the hype. Right? But God says, I want you to get caught up in the heart. Such a way. 
way that he had a childlike faith concerning God. David was the one that, what did they say about David? David had a, a heart, he, went, what, he was the one that went off, went after God's own heart. Yeah. That was David. Uh -huh. So think about that, he went after God's own heart. So that means he chased it. That means oh, that's all he thought about. So when you think, think about when he was taking care of the sheep, uh -huh. when he was doing what was considered a holy job, uh -huh. he was still doing it unto the Lord. So here's what I always say about that. Leaders can lead from the back of the front. Right? And so what God calls you to do, everybody has a plan and a purpose. Everybody has a role to play. Every ha everybody has a swim lane to stay in. Like God needs to use all of you at the appropriate time, at the appointed place. So everybody has a job. Everything that we do is ministry. Right? And so it ain't about what Serena got. It ain't about what Byron got. It ain't about us sitting up on the pulpit, those sitting over in the corners, those sitting on the front row, those at the door. Everybody has a leadership role in this place. Amen? So even if you're sitting in a pew, your job is to come in here and give God all the glory. Right? That's a role and that's an active role to be able to do that. So when you come and sit in the pews and you're giving God all the Things. We come to them in the name of 
what, Delta? <laughs> the name of Serena? Uh -huh. how, how are we approaching things? It's funny, but when we don't say I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we come in our own might. And sometimes that's why things don't happen for us. A jealous God, number one. We serve one that is powerful. We serve one that is almighty. We serve one that is holy. And we can't, we can't just go to him. We can't just say, God, you know what, God, I'm just, I, you know what, I, I messed up. Lord God, I need you to pick me up and dust me off. Lord God, I need you to guide me. Tell me what I'm supposed to do. I went down the wrong path, but God, only you can make it right. I can't depend on nobody else to do it. Only you can make it right. And we sing the song, Lead Me, Guide Me, A Long Way. Oh, we see you here on the stage. We say all that. But we don't believe it. We don't believe it. We don't believe it. God is looking for an authentic saint. One that is willing to step out and leverage the gifts and talents that he's given them. He's not looking for you to compare yourself to anybody else. Yes, just me. When I was speaking to the fifth graders, this week, I mean, number one, when God calls you, pastor called me, but God, I feel God called me. So when pastor calls you, and God calls you, 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 you know, people say, you got, a, you got enough on your plate right now. You really don't need to do another thing. But here's the deal. I don't ever want to miss an opportunity when God calls. Because here's the deal. Thank you, pastor, for just thinking of me. Obviously, you felt like I was going to be God-led with the word. So don't miss your opportunities. God gives them to you every day. Yeah. David didn't miss his opportunity. And I'm here to tell you, and I think we heard this in our Bible study. Uh, brother, we heard this in our Bible study. We heard that if uh, David would not have fought Goliath, and I wouldn't even say he fought, if he would have stood up to Goliath, right, he wouldn't have been the king of Israel. All right, right now. So think about the little thing that David had to do in order to be the king of Israel. So what is God asking you to do so that you can be? Come on now. I don't even know what it is. Just be. What is he asking you to do? Obedience is everything in this space. We were talking about that last Sunday in um, uh, Sunday school. We were talking about obedience. Obedience being better than sacrifice. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. One of the things I remember in this story is how did David get here? Because David wasn't the first one that was chosen to be the king of Israel. Mm -hmm. It was Saul. So what did Saul not do? All right. All right. So if you read it, what you'll find out is Saul was supposed to carry out God's instructions uh -huh. that were given to him through sin. Mm -hmm. And what had happened was <laughs> uh, Saul didn't do everything that God required him to do. He left out some things. God said, go kill everybody that's in this particular place. I want you to read it for yourself. I think I just preached on it one time before, but he told him to go and kill everybody. The animals, every, everything that was in this city. And what Saul did was, okay, well, okay, I'm going out and kill him. Okay, oh, wait a minute. Y'all are not from this city, so go ahead and get out of here. That's what he told somebody. Go ahead and get out. Now, God didn't say tell nobody to get out. He said go kill everybody in the city. But he told a group of people, go ahead and get out. Gave them time to get out of the city. So then when he started killing everybody, he saved the king. 
I think it was Agag, I believe. Saved him. Said, we're going to take him back with us. Then he saved all the good cattle. The stuff. Uh -huh. Said, we're going to take that back to him. So then when Samuel came up to him and said, wait, wait a minute, God, God, God please, I'm, what, what did you do? He said, I did everything God told me to do. So you know God, he's sleep concerning what he said. Well, well. So think about how we lie, too, right? We'll tell it, we'll, like God didn't see us do it. <laughs> I don't know why we think that. God ain't see us do it. So we lie because we want to focus on people, what people think, than what God thinks. That's right. Uh -huh. Right? Uh -huh. So that's when he did lie to Sam. And Sam said, wait a minute. Now, oh, what, what did you do? Then that's when Saul said, okay, well, you know what? I wanted to bring it as sacrifice unto God. So I got a gag and I got the, the, the best of the cattle and all of this stuff. And it's, God ain't asked you to do that. So here's the deal. This is what hurt my heart. This is why I want to be pleasing in God's eyesight. You know, it's one thing to fall, right? It's another thing to get back up and then just try to make sure that you're focused on be, focusing on being pleasing in God's eyesight. Not so much focusing so much so on grace and mercy. Well, well. Because right? we, well, oh, Lord, thank you for grace and mercy. Yeah. But goodness, I want to get to a point where I'm just doing things that are just pleasing in God's eyesight so he can say, I'm just well pleased with what you're doing. Right? Amen. Right? Amen. Amen. That's it. So, God looked at that situation and said, I repent that I even thought that Saul could do this. I don't want Lord to repent about Sarita. I called Sarita to do a particular thing. She knew what the call was on her life. And she didn't do it the way I ordained her to do it. She tried to do it like that. You see what I'm saying? She tried to, she tried to do it like that. I didn't ask you to do it that way. I asked you to do it this way. I don't want God, because here's the deal. God's plan and his purpose uh -huh. is going to get fulfilled, whether it's Sarita doing it or somebody else. Yeah. So if he called me to do it, then I want to follow his instructions and do it the way that he ordained me to do it. He anoints, he qualifies, he appoints. It's not about anybody else. There are some folks that have been promoted in jobs and the managers still don't know why he did it. Uh -huh. mm. You're looking at one. All right. All right. God is the one that promotes. Because oh, yeah. right. yes. God has a call on your life. All right. And when you walk in that call, uh -huh. no matter what, yeah. and you do it the way in which God ordained it and instructed it to be, All right. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> then God will take you from glory to glory. Uh -huh. To glory. Uh -huh. Listen to what I'm saying because young people will benefit from this message. All right. But there are some older people that need to benefit from this message because God ain't through with you yet. Amen. Understand that. Amen. He ain't through with you yet. He ain't through with you yet. Mm. So, a couple of things I wanted to say that I'm going to close. God needs his entire army on the battlefield. All right, all right. We are already predestined to win. All right. Understand this. Uh -huh. He needs his whole army on the battlefield. All right. We've already won. All right. But he needs you to act like it. Amen. Amen. He needs Amen. you on the battlefield. Amen. We've already won. Uh -huh. Wendy, he needs us to act like it. All right. All right. right. God wants us to just be. Be being an action word. Mm -hmm. Just be. Uh -huh. Amen. Katie, when you go to Cornell mm. on July 5th, uh -huh. God wants you to just be. Uh -huh. It ain't about what mama and daddy and us think about you going to big city New York. Uh -huh. God wants you to just be. Amen. Because he qualifies your call. Amen. He qualifies your call. 
Nobody can do it like God. He anointed you. Only he did that. God did that. He equipped you. Only he did that. He qualified you. He qualifies you. So it don't take you doing all kinds of stuff sometimes to get to where God wants you to be. So don't look at somebody else. Okay? God told you go get your PhD, go get your PhD. But if God told you all I want you to do is get your CNA license, and that's what you got, then you operate in that. Because there's some CNA folk that own businesses uh -huh. and some folks that got PhDs that work for somebody else. Uh -huh. So understand, whatever God calls you to do, uh -huh. you do that. Amen. 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 Allow God to do a new thing in your life. Because uh -huh. we ain't trusting him all the way. We kind of half trust in him. Number four, and this is the last one. Kind of lengthy, but last one. Be faithful to the call. Be faithful. Being faithful requires you to be obedient. Because I was going to have a fifth one around obedience, but then I thought, hmm, faithful and obedient, same thing to me. Be faithful to your call. God wants you to possess a childlike faith. Remember that. That Sunday school lesson was awesome when we read about childlike faith. Because uh -huh. we started talking about children. It ain't about children, about you. Yeah. Basically, it said that if you don't possess a childlike faith, you won't get in to the kingdom of heaven. That's right. So understand that. Yes, Byron, you got to humble yourself and trust God wholeheartedly That's right. as though he's your parent. Amen. Amen. And you're a baby still drinking milk. We never get too old to drink some milk and to eat some baby food. Okay? Don't think of yourself so high right? and be prideful that you can't take a step back and look at what thus says the Lord. Right? No one can do it the way God can do it. Be obedient to the call and remember, obedience is better than sacrifice. Don't get up here and say, well, you know what I... And, you know, I, I sacrifice X so that I can get Y. God don't care about that. He cares about your obedience. Amen. He doesn't necessarily care about what you did. He cares about how you did it. There's a lot of people that accomplish things in life today. And we look at what they did. But if you go back through and see how they did it, I don't want that. Uh -huh. So that's why I say you'll see folks glory, but you don't know their story. That's right. I hate you. I hate you. Right? You don't know their story. And the devil shines right too. Uh-huh. I think Reverend William said something on Wednesday. He said, the devil talks to God more than we do about us. I had to think about that. <laughs> the devil talks to God more than we do about us. And we ain't talking to God. Because we so reliant on grace and mercy. Lord, thank you for your grace and mercy. Lord, thank you for your mercy that's renewed every day. I want that to be my... You know, I want that to be my default. I don't want that to be my work. God, if I miss it, I just want you. If I just miss it. If I miss it, Mark. I just want you to, I, I just rely on your grace and mercy. But if I'm so focused on losing the game instead of winning the game, that's not what I'm saying. Sometimes we focus more on losing than we do on winning. And that's when we make mistakes. But if we focus on winning the game, I'm in it to please you wholeheartedly, God. 
If I'm in it to win it, that's it. Then I ain't got to worry about it because if I fall back, uh -huh. I'm just gonna get back up, brush out, right, and I'm back in the game. All right. I'm not gonna focus on the loss, right? Because it's grace and mercy. Yeah. If we can remain faithful in the few things God gives us, oh, how much more can God do and entrust us with? All right. If we just remain faithful in a few things. That's uh -huh. why I say be faithful to the call. Because right. it may start off being what one would consider a small call, right? But God doesn't have any respect to how small or how big. It's just his call. Uh -huh. But we pay attention to that. Yeah. So just remember, be faithful in a few things and God will make you a ruler over many. All right. Amen. As I close, remember in the book of Samuel, I told you guys this before. When Saul didn't do it all right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When he went off and did something the way he kind of wanted to do it. Uh -huh. And not the way God told him to do it. Mm -hmm. Don't have God repent mm -hmm. about you. Now he still took care of Saul. Actually David took care of him. Mm -hmm. Through Saul. Mm -hmm. When he was screaming. So God still blessed David to be a blessing to Saul, even though Saul didn't get the kingship. So don't let him repent about you. All you got to do is remain faithful. Amen. Do the four things I told you about, and God will do some things for you. Amen. Amen. Remember this. God's ways are not our ways. All right. His thoughts are not our thoughts. So listen to his voice. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. This stuff is going to be mysterious to you. It ain't going to be comfortable. Get used to being uncomfortable when it comes to God. You're going to be doing some things that you ain't used to doing. You're going to have to come out of a shell. You're going to have to be able to leverage everything he gave you and just trust it with you. You got to trust him. Amen. You got to trust him. You got to trust him. You got to follow his instructions. Amen. Don't pick and choose what you want to do and how you want to do it. Do it God's way. Amen. Do it God's way. Amen. So here's how I'm going to end. If you're ready to get in, in the game and on the battlefield for God, I just want you to stand up right now on your feet. If you're ready to just get in that battlefield with him. Because understand, God is with you. Always. God is with you. So as you're going through all those different battles and things uh -huh. that you're going through, God is with you yes, he is. through the battle. Yes, he is. And at the end of Psalms 23, it says that surely mercy, goodness and mercy uh -huh. shall follow you. Oh. And it doesn't say some of the days. It says all the days oh. of your life. Amen. That's what it says in the word. So here's the deal. We get on the battlefield. We're prepared to fight the good fight, knowing that we will win in uh -huh. the end. Yeah. All right. Because God is with us. Yes, he is. He's with us. Uh -huh. He's with us. Yeah. He's with us. Yeah. He's with us. Yeah. He's with us. Yeah. Understand, he's with you. Yeah. He's with you. Yeah. He's with you. No matter what the situation is, what the circumstance is, I don't know what it is. Only God knows what it is. Uh -huh. But he's with you. Yes, he is. And all he's saying, I just want you to rely on me. Uh -huh. Have a childlike faith. Uh -huh. And know that I can get it done. Uh -huh. Amen? Amen. 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 Pastor, I'm just going to let you go ahead and, and, and do this call to Christian discipleship. Just tell the folks what God has told you through this word so that they can understand that with God all things are possible. Uh -huh. There is nothing too hard for our God. God is faithful to do exactly what he said he was going to do. And God is just looking for a few saints, just a few. Uh -huh. That's it. That can just solely rely on him right now. Amen. 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 I love you. God bless you. God bless you.